slept in this morning. Two late nights. We're gonna go to this little market and get some uh, supplies to take care of this deer. Cause we're gonna be here for a while, so we gotta get it froze up. Really, I think what brought us good luck is our two wheel drive Suburban here. I mean, we were in New Mexico earlier this year and I had a VW SUV with California plates. We filled the tag that day. Now we got a two wheel drive Suburban. Maybe we should just change out our hunting rig to something a little more pedestrian. Get rid of that Raptor and buy a minivan or something. We got freezer paper, cling wrap. This thing is, this deer is going to be in our little freezer lickety split. But we'll have to figure out what we're going to do because when Marcus shoots one this evening or tomorrow, we'll have a second deer that we'll have to decide which one we're cooking and which one we're taking home. Better just grab one at a time for it don't get blood everywhere. I might be in trouble. This is going to be a pretty easy process, would be my guess. I'm going to bone out the crumbs and trim up the the uh, back straps. It's called gaff tape. That's what every production crew uses. We couldn't find any freezer tape at the little market. But we got that, we got freezer paper, we got cling wrap. We're about ready to process this deer. Not much left. I could do this all day long. <laughs> Look at that, huh? Whew. There you have it folks, got a deer completely processed, taken care of, now we got to go get Marcus's deer. There you go, processed coos deer. One coos deer buck down, one more to go. Well, I don't know why the camera's on me, it should be on you, you're the one doing the shooting now. <laughs> Last time we came down here, I could hardly get through here with my Nissan Titan. Now it looks like I'll get through here with my two-wheel drive Chevy Suburban Pavement Queen here. So what's the plan? The plan is to kill a deer. We're going to go up there to the glass and knob, old reliable glass and knob where Wade shot his deer, what? Two years ago. Two years ago. Two years Roll ago. the clip. Roll the clip. We're going to go try to repeat that. Yeah. That's the plan. All right, let's go. It's not good, folks. This is the biggest water source for miles around. And it's dry as a board. I say what we do. We know that this is a really good basin from prior hunts. Oh, yeah. If we go in here this evening and we don't see any deer, it tells us that these coos deer can't make a living without predictable, reliable water. Yeah. And then we use water sources oh, for sure. 
as our gathering point. It's a good sign. Deer tracks. There's got to be some place for them to find water. Yeah. other hunters in here. So I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. <laughs> but we're gonna find out. We're here. They hide so good when they're bedded. Crazy. But we got about two hours of daylight left. I would bet in the next hour. If they're in here, they'll start getting up and feeding a little bit. That could be our chance. We've seen uh, three does so far. So there are deer here. I was starting to wonder if there was even any deer here, but there's definitely some. Fingers crossed, maybe a buck will come out. It's getting cold. Temperature swings here are crazy. This goes from like, I don't know, 65 degrees and they'll drop down to the 20s at night. So he was on that far hill, like the peak of that hill. He comes straight down. There's like a triangle of stuff in the shadows. Yeah. He was right in line with that triangle, but on that back hill. But he was walking. He's out of sight, it'd be a perfect opportunity. It's gonna be like 200 yard or less shot. Let's do it. Let's do it. I didn't see it, but Marcus says there's a buck over on the other side of that ridge. So we got about 30 minutes, if that mad dash down here up the other side set up. Marcus says he's gonna shoot him at 200 yards.
Ready? Ready? Yep. Oh, Boy, you dropped him. How did? Dropped him. <laughs> Freaking dropped him. You sure. Well, I saw, I saw him fall to the left. If you want to, Marcus. Can you run over there. Yeah, I'll stay here and mark him. Okay. Well, Marcus just shot this buck. Right at the last minute of light. <laughs> Good thing we have these lenses with these big A7s. I'm gonna have to guide him to where it went to. I sent him over there so that I could mark the spot and then we wouldn't lose it because everything changes by the time you get over there. All right, got a cruise here. Oh, right at last light. I left all the cameras back there with Randy. I, just, I wasn't sure about the shot, so I ran up here to make sure. And Mark, Randy marked him back there for me. Oh, got it done. Sweet. Oh, this is awesome. Little, little buck. Heck, yeah. I was ready to shoot anything. This is a cool little, little four point. It's awesome. I didn't hit him exactly where I was aiming, but uh, he died quick. Looks like I kind of hit him forward, but... He's dead, so that's good. He's a little guy, but I was just, I don't know, I got in kill mode and he popped out. He's like 100 yards away. I didn't even, I wasn't even, I don't even think he hit 200 by the time I shot him. I ranged it. Yeah. It was 199. 199? When, when you got oh. there and gave the hoop, <laughs> so he was probably 200. Nice. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Oh. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you, you got me beat. <laughs> yeah, well, you got me beat last time you were here. <laughs> True, I just wanted to get another one under my belt before I get too picky with these guys. <laughs> That's cool. Well, anyone who knows Marcus Hockett knows that when he gets in the mode to fill a tag, you don't want to be the unlucky specimen in the way. <laughs> Great job, Marcus. Oh, thanks. That yeah. was yeah. so chaotic. Oh, yeah. The footage from when Marcus handed off to me, I'm sure is below subpar. <laughs> like barely above the worst you can get, but that's what we had to do. I got the easy part. I got a couple hind quarters. Marcus has a rifle, a whole bunch of camera gear, both front quarters, back straps, tender loins, and the head. <laughs> oh well. The good news is it's all downhill to the truck about not even three quarter mile away probably that's how see marcus has this figured out he shoots him closer to the truck he chases him over to the truck before he shoots and pulls the trigger how's that marcus i'm pretty... two bucks in two days i know that's that's pretty crazy huh we're gonna be eating some good vittles i we think i got we got what seven more days in arizona yeah <laughs> well we gotta go shoot some ducks and some quail oh yeah look at the dust here hold on Oh, when I run my clothes up, we'll do that. <laughs> Deer zero. Marcus and Randy fourteen. We won by two touchdowns. <laughs> Final. Woo! <laughs> well, good job, Marcus. Thanks. Thanks for letting me. We got out. After doing a morning's chores and a little sleep in, and you managed to shoot one right in the dark. <laughs> you got your money's worth. Yeah. What I got going on is we're going to prevent a little CWD act in here, folks. Arizona does not have chronic wasting disease yet, or at least no reported cases. And that's like some states. But what we're doing here, we flew to Arizona, we took these two deer we want to bring the skulls back home to Montana so like you see in a lot of our footage we boil the skulls remove all the brain material 
so that we don't have to worry about transporting CWD either to another state or within a state. We leave our carcasses, the spinal cords and everything out in the woods. You see how we do that? Wherever we harvest them, the whole carcass gets left there because we do the boneless, gutless method. Even though Arizona and some other states don't have CWD, the thing you can do to keep it that way is don't bring carcasses with spinal tissue or brain matter into your state like Arizona. You folks are lucky in Arizona that your agency is not having to spend millions and millions of dollars to monitor and manage CWD keep it that way with a few easy steps that we're going to walk through and just point here on the screen you guys can keep it that way hopefully so we went and got a little hot plate a boiling pot some baking soda and we're going to boil these skulls before we get on the plane and fly home because in our state where we live montana you're not allowed to bring in skulls from other states unless they've been boiled clean or you've skull capped them and clean the membrane out of the skull cap. So, we want to bring these home as kind of souvenirs, little mementos to the fun we've had down here. Pretty simple and easy. We got yeah. a pot of soup going. Uh huh? <laughs> That's some soup for dessert, huh? Yeah, we got some head cheese going there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Desperate times call for desperate measures. We got a to legally transport these back to Montana. Gotta have all this spinal and brain material out of here. So we got that done. A little, a little bleach and peroxide. You get home, you have a nice white skull. Not bad for $50 at Walmart. I know, we should have been able to do it. If they had everything in stock, we would have been able to do it for about $30. We're Mark. missing some of our essential Walmart supplies. Marcus, he gets pretty worked up over a twenty dollar difference, but eh. look at that. You did good, Marcus. Man, I owe you. This is heart of Marcus's coos deer buck. So tonight we're going hillbilly style. <clears throat> Marcus accidentally froze one of his tenderloins, so I'm contributing both of mine to the pot. Marcus is contributing one, but he said he'll throw the heart in also. <laughs> so all we have is this kettle here that looks like an old soup kettle. We got some butter, we got some peppers, and we got some salt and pepper and Italian seasoning. That's as high tech as we're gonna get. Usually if someone likes a little pepper, it's me. Just getting started for me. If you have a Gerber complete, most people think it's just fork and spoon and spatula. Nope. You go like this right here. You got some tongs. So when you're cooking your tenderloins and your heart and your peppers, you just grab them and you throw them on the plate. And you don't have to chase them around. I'll show you. Oh, looks oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it? that's good. That's perfect. Yeah. All right. How, how do you want your heart? Oh, whatever. And that's it, folks. Thanks. Thanks for cooking. Yeah. As Uncle Larry would say, don't thank me. Thank God I did it. That's really good. Even on a Dixie plate. Anyone who doesn't like heart, I think, has never tried it. It's got a finer grain to the muscle. It's like a borderline sweet taste to it. Man, that's good.